S22 Ultra has been out for just about five months and I think it's time to revisit it just to see how this particular device has aged. A few things that I wanted to make some call outs on been as though we did get this pretty major June update which was well over a gigabyte. So let's go ahead, take a look and see at how the S22 Ultra has aged. Uh, but with that being said, let's get right into it. This is Galaxy S22 Ultra follow up after the updates. So kicking things off, I want to go ahead and give a disclaimer. This is the same S22 Ultra model that I purchased on launch day. I haven't sold it and gotten a new model or changed colors or anything like that. This is the exact same white model uh, that I've been rocking since launch. So things like, you know, battery performance, stuff like that. I should be able to give a really good kind of perspective as mine hasn't restarted or, or, or anything like that. This is the exact same model. Uh, so what I want to go ahead and get into, perfect segue, first is battery life. So just in terms of the overall battery life, I do notice that there is a difference. So there is a difference and there isn't a difference. So let me explain. So when it comes to the battery life on the S22 Ultra currently, I am noticing when I compare it to other Android devices that I get, even the 13 Pro Max, which is still the battery king in my opinion, I do find that it keeps up with those other Android devices when it comes to actual usage, doing things on the phone, draining the battery, things like that, right? Now, where I still have yet to see the change or see the improvement has to be in the standby drain. Now, when I put this phone next to say, my Pixel 6 Pro or my Vivo X Fold, and I just turn the screens off, leave on the always on display, I can come back after like an hour and a half to two hours and those other two devices may be at i would say you know approximately drop maybe two percent or something of that nature the s22 ultra for some reason and it's not just specific to this particular phone i've noticed it with other samsung devices as well when it comes to standby drain they've never been the best in that same example i'm seeing a drop of say maybe four to five percent now that doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but the biggest takeaway that I wanna give is during standby drain, those other devices sip battery. Why can't it be the same for this device as well? At the end of the day, no matter what your phone can do in terms of feature set, if the battery just isn't there or if the battery is draining as I'm not even using it in this specific example, well then all those features kinda of just go away. So I would love to see Samsung with a One UI 5 because it's 100% a software issue. Just focus more on optimization in terms of standby drain and things like that. Maybe turn off some things in the background that we may not need running. That way we can preserve that battery life when we turn the screen off. The next thing I wanna draw focus to, pun intended, has to be the camera set. So the camera set with the S22 Ultra over the last five months, I've definitely seen you know some, some changes here and there. Now, in terms of the actual output quality, I won't say that I've seen a change there. I still think the pictures that come out of this device are among some of the best when it comes to smartphones. Now, where I mainly see the difference is in terms of the consistency. So things like you know the HDR algorithm, skin tones, things like that, I notice that they're far more consistent in terms of giving me the result that I want. In terms of the HDR, I'm seeing far less in terms of blown out highlights, super crushed blacks. It's giving me a more balanced look, something of what I'm used to say on my Pixel 6 Pro. So I'm just finding not so much that the output with this particular device is drastically improved or drastically better. No, it still takes phenomenal photos, photos that i was getting before the june patch were just as good what i'm finding is that the consistency at which i'm delivered that type of output is more consistent i'm getting those types of photos that are just great and outstanding way more often than i was previously 
previously i would say i was getting the, i was getting photos of that caliber maybe six out of ten shots and i'd say now just a rough estimate i'd have to say maybe eight out of out of ten shots are you know of that caliber where i'm really just blown away at how good the photo came out so shout out to samsung great job in terms of the you know consistency of the camera your output has, has always been for the most part phenomenal just focus on optimizing your camera app Things like a, 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 a slow performing, you know, shutter button, which, you know, lends, lends to shutter lag or just the overall app itself. Me trying to launch it, double clicking the power button. It doesn't launch the fastest. So just focus on things like that, optimizing the experience, polishing your own software. And I think we'll be in good steps in regards to the camera set on this particular device. And then the last thing I want to cover in terms of this follow up has to be the ui performance now i know there's going to be tons of people who say you know regular people don't care about animations regular people or average consumers don't care about how fluid the software is they just want it to click and go into whatever they're doing they don't care how they get there and that's definitely true my mom and my my, my mom and my dad they don't notice that the animations on the s22 ultra aren't as good as say my pixel or something like that right especially not while they're not te you know testing those two devices side by side but if you're someone like me who maybe has come from say a pixel or comes from an iphone or comes from pretty much any other android manufacturer at this point you're gonna notice that the animations just don't feel as responsive and as fluid as they do on those other devices now in terms of the improvement what i will say samsung has definitely improved the fluidity in terms of like lag and things like that because people tend to get you know stuttering animations and lag kind of you know misconstrued they are two totally different concepts two totally different things and obviously i'm not going to be able to show you guys here on camera just because like i said everything's gonna work flawlessly on camera but the thing is it is two totally different concepts two totally different things lag is when you say open an application and that application doesn't immediately load there's like a hesitation or a hang or something like that that would be what i would consider lag where stuttery animations is just if i go to invoke an animation and i notice that that you know animation isn't at the full 120 frames per second or maybe it's just kind of stuttery or choppy those are the things that i'm noticing so in terms of lag which i did have lag on this particular device I would say like you know originally when i first purchased it the lag is gone the device moves fluid and it does move throughout the operating system you know fluidly uh, it doesn't necessarily have an issue in terms of opening apps right when you click them or anything like that at least i'm not having that issue but the issue that i continue to see is the animations just don't perform as well as its other android counterparts a s22 ultra with you know a polished camera app in terms of performance and polished animations or a polished you know skin or refined skin on top of android is a dangerous threat i think samsung really needs to focus on just optimization polish and refinement even if i'm looking at you know say the difference between this device which is the z fold 3 and my s22 ultra i even notice differences in terms of the uh, in terms of the performance and animations between these two devices my z fold 3 feels significantly more fluid which totally baffles my mind just because one foldables one are, are a lot more new and what i will say is in terms of foldables the software is far harder to get right and harder to optimize for a foldable than it is for say in s22 ultra which is just a normal slab style smartphone so if anything it should be reversed where the s22 ultra feels more smooth more fluid more responsive but in all honesty it's been the fold for me now it's definitely something that samsung could work on with like i said a software update or whatever the case may be but it's just something that i haven't seen just yet so we do have one UI coming right around the corner, should be here, I would say within like the next two to three weeks. So I'll definitely have that beta installed on my S22 Ultra. So if you are excited for that, make sure you hit that subscribe button as I'm definitely gonna be bringing some coverage on that. But that's just kind of been my follow up with the S22 Ultra. And I guess you could even say the June update between both of these devices. 
Samsung has made some awesome strides. They've done some great things that, you know, deserves kudos and, and deserves praise. Things like, you know, making the device feel more fluid. It's still not 100% there, but making it feel more fluid. Improving the shutter because it has been improved. It's not perfect, but it has been improved. Getting their software updates out in a timely fashion. Besides this pretty major June patch, Samsung has been among the first, if not first, in getting these security patches out the door. So kudos to Samsung. You're doing a lot of things right and you have a great compelling device. I just need you guys to focus more on not trying to cram every single feature or every single piece of new you know, hardware that you can and focus more on refining and polishing what you already have. That, in my opinion, is going to take, you know, Samsung's devices, their phones, their watches, their tablets to the absolute next level. You already kill it when it comes to the feature set. You already kill it when it comes to the hardware. Focus on your software optimization. And Samsung is definitely going to be a force to reckon with. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's going to do it for the video today. As always, this is Ike's Tech Talk. I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.